I'd like to present the class of 2025. <laughs> Callie Adamski. Jennifer Albrecht. Addison Andrews. Jason Benini. <laughs> Alexis Barry. Caitlin Bose. Jacob Carroll. Jocelyn Castellanos. Chamberlain. Colin Sintron. Maya Coons. <laughs> Ashley Coons. 
EVD. Jocelyn Dykeman. <laughs> Milo Fish. Anna Friedman. <laughs> Max Friedman. Emily Gaylord. Thank you. Oh, 
کردم خوب است Samantha Jimenez Morales. Hunter Kelly. Olivia McDonald. James Morella. Yeah. 
Cheyenne Perry. Kaya Pinto Jr. Henry Powers. Jaden Quince. Jordan Bradley. Nicholas Rudenauer. Brianna Rayon. Samantha Cricket. Sean Salvatore. Joseph Schweitzer. Logan Smalley. Anna Soros. Luca Spencer. Holden Spock. Sophia Swinehart.
Hudson Williams. George Truman. Phoenix Witherall. Thank you, Mr. Sten. Everyone, how about another round of applause for the class of 2025? And at this time, can I please call up our select students who will be singing the Star Spangled Banner? How about this, huh? You know, um, before I start my speech, um, I was telling someone how stressed I've been for the past, I'd say week, but 
year and a half. Um, and, and, you know, in talking with the eighth grade team about what we wanted to do for our eighth graders, um, you know, about a month ago, we, we said we, we want to do something. And we, we really were not that excited about anything virtual anymore. I think we're all Zoomed out and Google Meet out. Um, and we really wanted to kind of roll the dice and hope that we'd have good weather and uh, be able to get everyone out here today. And this is something, you know, um, we had National Junior Honor Society inductions the other night, um, and that was pretty special, and I had goosebumps then. And I have goosebumps now. Uh, out here tonight, um, beautiful night on our football field, seeing everyone sitting here um, without masks, some with, which is fine. Um, but this is really exciting. So how about just a round of applause for all being here? So as I said, this has been an exciting week for me. Um, we started with our National Junior Honor Society inductions this Wednesday night. I was able to see my daughter graduate kindergarten this morning. And now we're live here tonight for the first time in over a year and a half. On behalf of the students, staff at CMS, we welcome you to our eighth grade moving up ceremony. Tonight is an important evening. Your son, daughter, grandson, granddaughter, brother, sister, and niece, nephew, or friend is soon to be a graduate of CMS and will become a member of the freshman class at Chatham High School. Tonight would not be possible without the dedication of the excellent middle school faculty and staff. It also wouldn't be possible without you, the parents. Your continued support of the school and dedication to your children is appreciated, so thank you. Last, it wouldn't be possible without everyone sitting behind you, the kids. You're a very special group of students who've dealt with things beyond your control. You survived the COVID years and you deserve a round of applause. You've dealt with hybrid learning, remote learning, and wearing masks all day. You've witnessed and partaken in movements and you've taken a stand against social injustices. You've seen and been a part of wonderful things and sometimes challenging issues. You're authors, trailblazers, leaders, but you're all still just kids trying to figure out your way through this challenging thing we call life. As challenging as it may be, you found your way through and you embark on the next chapter at the high school. While you start a new chapter of your life, the story you left behind at CMS will never be forgotten. Thank you. And now I'm going to call Mr. Stead for the Pledge of Allegiance. Would you please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. I now like to welcome our superintendent, Dr. D'Angelo. Good evening, parents, students, teachers, administrators, family, and friends. What a beautiful evening on so many levels. First, over the last two evenings, I've had the pleasure to celebrate our Junior National Honor Society, the middle school and our high school National Honor Society inductees at our first in-person gather gatherings in many months. And now tonight here with all of you, it's almost surreal. To immediately put your mind at ease, my goal this evening is to convey to our students a simple, brief, yet practical message. We have to acknowledge that this has been far from an ideal year. But as I reflected on some of the powerful takeaways from this year, I realized it was truly nothing more than a reflection of life itself. We all appreciate it when things are not predictable and go our way. But the truth of the matter is, that is seldom the case. All right. 
this year could not in any way have been anticipated or even scripted. But life has no script. It's not a well-rehearsed scene from a movie or a TV show. It's kind of more like a reality TV series of following your favorite YouTuber. Mr. Burns just gave me an idea. The COVID years sounds like a sitcom about 10 years from now. At minimum, it's unpredictable. As you move up to ninth grade, you are transitioning to a new chapter of your life. One that includes finding out more about yourself, finding your voice, exploring your passions, as well as your career interests. With some of the same unpredictability as well. It's the next stop on your personal journey to becoming more responsible adults. Innovative ideas and solutions come from challenges and opportunities we embrace. Just this week, I've seen some examples of advanced technology that you will have access to in just a few short years that is going to profoundly change the way you learn, work, and live in these unprecedented times. So here's the message. Are you ready? Your mission is to understand that if there is an opportunity you desire and it does not come knocking, learn how to build a new door to it. Be bold, be curious, be courageous. Be your best at what you do and what you choose to do, but always remain true to who you are. Last point, look to the person on your right. Now look to the person on your left. And remember, almost anything is possible if you have the support of others, your classmates, your teachers, your family, and your friends. This year is a perfect example of that. Have a safe summer. We're looking forward to next school year when there's our hope that it will look much more familiar to a traditional, a traditional school year than this one has. Good evening. Thank you, Dr. D'Angelo. And at this time, I'd like to call up this year's valedictorian, Brian Graziano. My name is Ryan Graziano, and I'm the current valedictorian of the class of 2021 at Chatham High School. Firstly, I appreciate, appreciate Mr. Burns for wanting to come speak to you all tonight. Uh, I'm honored to be here, and I hope that all of our students and freshmen can gain something from what I have to say. So believe it or not, 7th and 8th grade was not great for me, and I've had some many unpleasant memories from my days in middle school. Uh, don't get me wrong, I certainly had some great times in middle school. They were definitely some of the hardest years I've had growing up. Didn't really have my friends, got picked on quite a bit, uh, never felt like I fit in anywhere. Uh, however, what I did gain in middle school was to drive to work hard and push myself to get the best grades I could. I'm sure there are some of you here tonight uh, that can relate to this, and I'm here to say that it only goes up from here. My message to those people is to stay strong and don't let anyone discourage you from doing what you know is right. Being good at school and being a responsible student might not be the popular thing, but trust me, you will reap the benefits in the future if you stay true to yourself and don't let others affect your actions. I also know that there are probably other students who don't care about, as much about the grades uh, and would, would rather do other things. To those students, I completely understand your point of view. Uh, believe it or not, almost all of my friends have lived through high school doing the bare minimum, minimum at most and have absolutely no direction in life moving forwards. Um, luckily, you all are still young and have four years of high school left in front of you, an empty slate more or less. Although uh, I'm sure you've heard this a thousand times, I encourage you all to at least put in some effort and try. And believe it or not, every single one of you has a huge amount of potential and is capable of standing right here doing the same thing I am uh, four years from now. All that you need to do is stay determined, stay out of trouble, and most importantly, put in the effort. The reason why I'm emphasizing the importance of effort to you all because being, if being successful in school opens doors and gives you options in the future, whether that be for college, a job, or anything you want to do. The mindset of working hard is what led to my successes, and I've witnessed firsthand the impact it can have on your life. I don't intend to scare you all, but high school is where things start to count, where school becomes much more important. However, in my opinion, there is no need to stress about this. So there are plenty of resources that will be available to you, including your teachers, that all want to see you succeed. If anything, you all should be extremely excited for these next four years. I'm sure most of your parents and grandparents in the audience have very fond memories of their high school years, and it'll be no different for you all. 
being in high school brings a lot more freedom, whether that be taking an interesting elective class, joining a club or two, or just meeting new people. This new freedom is great, and I have no doubt in my mind that you all will be very happy for new experiences next year. So in conclusion, congratulations on everyone's successful graduation from middle school, and I wish you all the best of luck as you enter high school this fall. Thank you. Thank you, Ryan. Uh, this is Ryan's um, third speech in a row this week. So I think he's done. And I have a uh, soft spot in my heart for Ryan um, as he was on my interview committee when I got the job uh, as, a, as middle school principal. So, so Ryan, nice job. <laughs> and now to present this year's Triple C and Tiana Courage Award winners, this is Jackie Hoffman. Welcome back, Chatham families. This is what, such a great celebration, and congratulations to our eighth graders. I commend your strength and your resiliency in the last year and a half. I'm so proud of all of you. E.E. E. Cummings said, it takes courage to grow up and become who you really are. As part of the Martin Luther King Lecture Series, Sienna yearly asks each Capital District Middle School to nominate two candidates who value diversity and uniqueness, as well as promoting an inclusive school setting. In midwinter, our faculty chose two students who exemplify qualities of kindness, empathy, and consideration for others, both in and out of the classroom. Both students are officers of NJHS. They were selected and respected by their peers. Both show excellent sportsmanship on their respective football, track, and softball teams. And most of all, they commit to service. Holden volunteers weekly for the key communicator services like projects like our holiday compassion action, as well as community festivals. And Jordan mentors a sixth grader weekly in our peer buddy program. Congratulations for being our Sienna Courage nominees. Jordan Radley and Holden Spock. is an honor presented by the Attorney General James's office that recognizes character, courage, and commitment of hardworking students across New York State. Two students selected have maintained academic excellence, a strong sense of self, and kindness to others. They are again our key communicators, officers in NJHS, members of service club, and both students have maintained pen pal relationships with senior citizens. Taylor has a commitment to senior citizens in our town, and Aiden has a commitment to Horse Farm. Both have actually baked goods and written cards, even during COVID time, to essential workers. Vince Lombardi said, success rests not only in the ability of one, but upon the commitment, loyalty, and pride. Thank you, and I honor Taylor Van Lee and Aiden Brennan for the Triple C Award.
Thank you, Ms. Hoffman. At this time, we welcome our eighth grade student representative, Brianna Rion. It's hard to believe that it has been over a year since our schools have been closed down as a result of the early stages of the COVID-19 pandemic. More than a year ago, we ran out of our classrooms and expected to enjoy a nice long weekend and come back to school on Monday. Then we were told that we were going to go fully remote to help prevent the spread of the coronavirus. Many people, including myself, only expected to work from home for just two weeks, not for the rest of the school year. One of the hardest obstacles in the beginning was the abrupt change of scenery from our school building and the gradual loss of motivation. When schools first closed, I thought this change was interesting, and I thought it was going to be short, relaxing, and even a partial break from our traditional school schedule. After the first week of being fully remote, this change had taken a huge toll on my mental health. I remember being so devastated from not being able to see my friends, teachers, and just communicate with people outside of home and family. During these early months of quarantine, it felt as though I was just doing large amounts of homework until the last day of school. Usually the end of the year is so exciting and full of fun activities, concerts, and trips, but I couldn't, but I just couldn't wait until summer break. Even usual birthday parties were canceled, and for many of us, our 13th birthday was a large milestone. When the last day of school finally did come, I felt a tinge of sadness and disbelief at the thought that my seventh grade year was really over. My year finished without any communication with any of my friends, but instead with the closing of my laptop. Moving on to the beginning of eighth grade, we began the year with two weeks being fully remote. I was so excited for this new beginning and to see my friends, classmates, and teachers. Even if I just saw them on a computer screen, it was already so much better than not being able to see them at all. This change allowed me to feel as though I was part of a class rather than just completing homework independently. Then we were able to begin going back to school in a new hybrid schedule. On my first day back in the, in the building, I remember thinking just how much things have changed between last year and our eighth grade year. Between the mask wearing to the social distancing and so much more, school felt so different than what we were all used to. However, we were still able to participate in our classes and socialize with each other, despite all the safety precautions. We were even able to participate in our music classes such as band, choir, and orchestra. In these classes, we were even able to form a virtual concert for our community. And moving on to the fourth quarter of our school year, everyone had the opportunity to come back to school every day. This changed my perspective upon school because we now had the ability to interact with some of our closest friends. Our classes were changed in a variety of ways and school finally began to feel normal again. With everyone back, it finally felt like a normal eighth grade class with all the noise and socialization occurring. Today, at the end of our year to middle school, I believe that this year has been a journey for every one of us, but it will also be a year that none of us will forget. Now, with multiple new vaccines, we can finally begin to see the far end of the coronavirus. In conclusion, I believe we can all agree this past year has been quite a unique experience, but we are finally making it out of this pandemic together. Thank you, Brianna, and now I'd like to call up Taylor Van Wee. This has been such a great celebration for us all, and I'm so happy that we can all be here today. I thought a good ending for the celebration would be to acknowledge one of the best teachers that Chatham Middle School has had, Ms. Hederick. Ms. Hederick has impacted us all so much, it would be so hard to let her go. She made me smile every fifth period, and I always look forward to attending her class. She was not your average teacher. She was fun, nonchalant, and didn't put up with any nonsense. Thank you, Ms. Hederick, for helping us all through this crazy school year and preparing us for the next chapter in our life, high school. You will be greatly missed, and congrats, we made it. Before I um, start my closing remarks, 
Um, can I just have all the teachers um, stand one last time? And can we give a round of applause for our teachers? So before we end, I want to address everyone on how challenging a year this has been on everyone. Everyone sitting here tonight has been affected in one way or another. There were days I personally didn't think I could move forward. But two weeks ago, I was reminded of the why. I want everyone here to think about the why. Why are you all here tonight? Why, despite the struggles, Despite the difficulties, do we wake up every day for school or for work? We do it for your why. My why, just like many of you in front of me, is sitting in the 75 chairs behind me. I do it for our students. And I want to thank one particular student for reinforcing that for me last week. I was in a pretty rotten mood, um, and he came to see me. He wanted advice on, of all things, shoes. I first asked him if he would prefer to speak to my wife. During our conversation, my mood changed. He reminded me of my why. He knows who he is, and I sincerely thank him for that. My why is the kids. Today, I watched my daughter graduate kindergarten. Today, you watch your once kindergartners graduate eighth grade. Last night, I was finishing the final touches on my speech, thinking of how to end it while my girls watched Toy Story for the millionth time. And as they were watching it, I heard it. So eighth graders, I leave you with a quote from the great Buzz Lightyear to infinity. And beyond. I once again want to congratulate our eighth grade students. Um, I want to thank Dr. D'Angelo, the Board of Education, and thanks go out to all of you, um, our families, staff, and students for making this a great year. Thank you all. And one last time, I give you the class of 2025.
Thank you, everybody. Have a good night.